Hello and welcome along to Narita International Airport in Tokyo for another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're back in the brand new fly-by-wire A380X for another cold and dark quick start guide where I'm going to be showing you all the basics you need to know to get her up and running. Uh, I've also just installed this superb ANA sea turtle livery which looks absolutely amazing. Uh, that's available on flightsim.to so do go check that out. And honestly, we are so spoiled at the moment, I feel like I'm making one of these cold and dark videos almost every week. We've had the PMDG 777, uh, the Phoenix A319 and 321, the iFly 737 MAX 8, and now the Fly-by-Wire A380. So, yeah, what a time to be a flight simmer. I'm certainly enjoying learning all these fantastic planes, hope you are too, so let's hop inside the A380 and get started. So as advertised, we are completely cold and dark, so let's take the captain's seat, fire up the tablet, and get things started. So first of all, we're going to import our Simbri flight plan. So just click on the big blue button in the middle, and that'll bring in all the data we need. And there we go, fuel and payload imported. And we've also got our route from here in Tokyo up to Fukuoka, and that's all our routing there. And if we click the next button down, we can just double check it's imported our flight plan correctly, and then the next button we can go to ground services and start thinking about our payload. And we can load the plane in either instant, fast or real time. This is a quick start guide so we'll do it instantly and click on the little two arrows there. And that will load all our passengers as per our sim brief flight plan. And we can also check the upper and main decks. And then fueling, same again. Uh, we can either do it in instant, fast or real. Again we'll do it instantly and just click on the little blue arrow and that will fuel the plane from our Simbri flight plan. So there we go. Uh, moving up to the top right, we click on services and we can select our ground power unit. So now we can move overhead and start getting the plane powered up. Uh, first off, let's just make sure all our batteries are turned on and then we can switch on all four external power switches like that. And we can just hear everything whirring into life. So let's align our IRS switches. So these three switches all go to nav. I do love all the wear on the switches, they look really cool. Uh, moving down then, let's pop the cabin oxygen supply on and let's get some lights on. We'll put our beacon lights on. Um, we can put our seatbelt signs on and also uh, our no mobile lights. And we can arm our emergency exit lights and pop our standby compass on. And then moving up to the top of our centre panel, we are going to turn on all of our fuel pumps. And there are quite a lot of them. So, just bear with me, talk amongst yourselves, there we go. So that is pretty much it for our overhead panel for now. Uh, let's move down and start looking at the FMS. And this is all touch screen, so if we come to the top left where it says active and then click on init, uh, we can now press the button at the top right which says company flight plan request. And that just brings up the uplink insert in progress message. And that'll take a couple of seconds to import our Simbri flight plan. And there we go, received company flight plan. And then we can drop that down to insert. And that's it. So we've got our departure and arrival airports. We've got our cruise altitude, cost index. Uh, Tripwind doesn't seem to work at the moment. Um, so let's go top left again and then click on flight plan. And there we go, that's brought in all our waypoints as per Simbrief. And we'll sort our SID shortly. So back up to the top and we can click on our performance drop down and also uh, we can check out our fuel and load page. So let's start populating some of that info from our flight plan then. So if we go back across to the tablet and click on our little flight plan icon there and we want to check our zero fuel weight which is 330.1 tonnes and we can add that in our zero fuel weight here and we can input that using our keyboard which is a really cool feature and hit the enter button and then we want to check our block fuel as well, uh, which is uh, 32.8 tonnes if we round that up. And again, we can enter this using the keyboard, 32.8, and then you hit the enter key. And then finally, we want to enter our zero fuel weight centre of gravity, which is back on our payload page. So if we click on the payload button, and there we go, we're looking for 34.9%. So we'll drop that in in the top right hand side of our page, 34.9, enter. OK, and then everything else on that page, uh, I'm going to leave as is for now. That's sort of uh, populated everything from our flight plans. So that's all fine. Um, back to our init page. So that is all complete. And let's go to our performance page then. 
and we don't have a performance calculator in the A380 so I'm going to use the Simbrief performance tool so we'll click on that and I will uh, populate from my last flight and then hit the blue calculate button and that's given us a uh, flaps one for our takeoff uh, with a flex thrust set in and a flex temp 66 degrees V1 142 rotate 143 and V2 148 so let's drop those in the boxes so we've got 142 uh, 143 and 148 and then on the right hand side of the page we can add our flex takeoff setting and our temperature was 66 degrees so there we go that's set and then we've also got our flaps set to one for takeoff uh, packs are on anti-ice is off and to find out our trim settings we can see that here on the lower ecam it's 36.2 percent so we'll drop in 36.2 for our trim setting and that is our performance page complete so performance done fuel and load done let's go back to our init page and down the bottom we're going to add our departure information so we are departing on runway 34 left out of Narita on the Tetra 8 SID which is down the bottom here and our transition is going to be uh, NPAR which is just there okay so then we can click the temporary flight plan button and then insert temporary and there we go that is all our waypoints for our departure and then we can do the same for our arrival so we click on our arrival airport uh, runway 34 and our approach is going to be ILS 34 and then our star is going to be Hawks North and again we can click the temporary flight plan button and then insert temporary so that is our flight plan all complete we've got all our waypoints for our departure and everything's um, joined up nicely with our arrival into Fukuoka as well so that's all looking fine so that is everything done for our pre-flight if we come back down to our init page I'll just show you a couple more options and um, we can actually navigate all the different pages um, from here as well so I can click on the performance page uh, there we go and also we can do the same by using these soft keys here so I can click on uh, performance uh, in it uh, we can click on the flight plan page so there's multiple ways of sort of navigating the FMS uh, as well as the touch screen that you see there okay to the FCU then and we can start thinking about configuring our autopilot for our takeoff so uh, let's just go through to our Navigraph charts and let's find our Tetra 8 uh, departure chart which should be somewhere down the bottom here uh, there we go so we'll click on that and we're going to look for our initial climb altitude so uh, we're going to fly out runway 34 left turning right all the way out to Rooney where we need to be at or above 13,000 feet so that's what we'll add into the FCU and we'll just wind that in up to 13,000 so that's set and then we can pop our flight director on and we'll just uh, set our heading and speed to managed mode and then finally we just need to add our QNH so if we just double check on the tablets so that's 1013 so we'll flip that to hectopascals and there we go 1013 okay so a really cool feature I want to show you now if you twist the range dial to zoom it opens up the OANS on the nav display and that is the onboard airport navigation system now you do need a Navigraph account for this to work but it's absolutely brilliant so it shows you all these taxiways it shows you where you are relative to them as well so you can really plan your taxi route out to your runway uh, which is I'm showing you here all the way up to runway 34 left uh, and that will track you as you're sort of taxiing along which is really really cool very handy if you're planning on flying on the VAT sim network or something like that okay let's get our APU on then so we're going to hit the APU master switch on and then we'll just wait a couple of seconds and then hit the start button there we go and let's hop outside and see if we can hear that APU firing up starting to sound pretty good yeah they've absolutely nailed that I love that heat blur coming out of the exhaust as well very nicely done okay so we've got the green APU available right now so we can switch the APU bleed on and now we can turn off all our external power switches so one two three four and we can pop down to the EFB as well 
and go to our ground services and release our ground power unit. So now we are fully powered by the APU. Okay, so we're about ready for pushback then. Let's open the GSX menu and we will select uh, prepare for pushback and departure. And here comes our ramp agent there, ready to insert our ground pin into the nose wheel gear. Got a bit of a big job on today because the nose wheel gear on the A380 is absolutely massive. So he's all ready for pushback. Let's take a look at how he's getting along. If we just pan around a little bit further, you should see him coming into shot. There he is. Look how tiny he is. So he'll pop the bypass pin into our nose wheel gear and then the tug can come and connect. So that's our bypass pin inserted and the tug can come and connect us now. So let's take a look at that. Here it comes. So he's locked the gear and I guess at this point we should think about disconnecting the jetway. So if we go into our ground services and then disconnect the jetway and that will automatically shut the door as well. And there it goes. So the jetway's gone, the tug is connected, we're about ready to go. So it's asking us our pushback direction and we're going to select facing south on taxiway T3 and we need to release our parking brakes, there we go. So we've been given the go ahead to start our engines then, obviously we've got four engines in the A380 and we're going to start engines one and four first followed by two and three. So overhead and we're going to turn the engine start switch to ignition and that should start pushing our compressed bleed air down to the engines and then we can flick on engines uh, one and four. So the fuel levers go on and then we'll just have a little monitor of the engine displays, uh, make sure the N2 is rising as it should. Everything's looking good for 1 and 4, so I'm happy with that. And you can just see the little white rectangles around engines 1 and 4. That shows that those engines are in the process of starting up. And if we have a little look outside, we can have a little listen to engine 1. And there we go, it's just starting to spool up now. I do like the fact that they've included the Rolls-Royce logos on the engines in this a and livery. It all adds to the experience. He's a brave man, our little wing walker, isn't he? I wouldn't get anywhere near one of these beasts, I can tell you that for nothing. Okay, so if we look at the engine display, we've got the available message now. So we've got a good start on engines one and four. Packs are on, and we can think about starting engines two and three. So that's all looking good. So fuel levers two and three on. And again, a quick monitor of our engines, and we can see our N2 and N3 figures rising nicely and they're already sort of around about the 20% mark so that's all looking good and that little warning is just to let us know our transponder is not switched on so if we come down and hit the surveillance page and pop that into auto uh, we can leave TCAS on standby and that's cleared that message right so we'll just pop the performance page back on screen for our departure and let's take another look outside, see how engines 2 and 3 are getting along. So engine 2 just spalling up now. Christ, that guy is close to the wheels. Go steady, mate. And engine 3, also looking good. What an absolute beast. Superb. So we've got a good start on engines 2 and 3 as well. So that's all fine. Uh, let's have a quick look around, see if there's anything else we need to do. Tablet's got our flight info on screen. Got our OANS set up. Okay. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful evening in Narita as well. The sun's just about to set. Let's just wait for a couple more seconds for the tug to complete pushback. Just about on the centre line now. There we go, that is looking good. 
So parking brake set. Okay, so power is all transferred over to our engine, so we can switch the APU bleed off, engine start mode can go off, and the APU master can go off, and we will advise our ground crew. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Uh, let's flick our taxi lights on. Everything else in the overhead is fine, so we are all set for our taxi. So, as the ground crew are just finishing up, the tug is disconnecting, I will wrap it up there for today guys. That concludes my cold and dark quick start guide for the new fly-by-wire A380X in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if you missed my previous video, I took the A380 out on a first flight, so do consider checking that out, I'll put a link to that below. But that's it for today, if you did enjoy the video, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching, bye bye.